Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I wanna continue our discussion of recursion by looking at some additional recursive functions. So we're gonna take a look at some common string operations, including how to display a string character by character in forward order, how to display a string character by character in reverse order, and how to determine the number of characters in the string. Now, all three of these problems are either already implemented or we could easily implement with a for loop. So for example, printing out character by character a string, we could simply see out the string, right? Or printing out a character, or printing out a string character by character in reverse order. We could simply write a for loop that starts at the last valid index, prints out the character, subtracts one, so on and so forth, until it prints out the character at index zero, and then it stops. And then for printing out the number of characters in the string or determining the number of characters in the string, we could just call the member function of the string class size or the member function of the string class length. So the purpose here is not to reinvent the wheel, but to see that some of these common problems that already have existing solutions, or you might think of as implementing solution using iteration, could be implemented as a recursive solution. And the recursive solutions are pretty short and pretty elegant. So they're really great for kind of dipping your feet more into the recursion waters. So let's start by working on our display string where we are going to display a string character by character in forward order. So for example, hello, we'll print out H and then E and then L and then L and then O. This first implementation that I'm gonna write is going to require that we pass in the current index. So starting at zero and traversing zero, one, two, three, four, and then stopping once we reach five, which is an invalid index. So this is kind of a clunky solution, but fear not, we're going to rewrite the display string solution so that you don't have to pass in this extra argument here. All right, I've already stubbed out these functions. So here's display string with the extra argument, and then here's display string without the extra argument. All right, so let's start with our base case. So our base case is when index has been advanced so far that it's actually invalid, meaning we've already printed out each character at a valid index. So that would be if index is equal to s.length or s.size. Okay, so consider that example of hello, right? So uh, the h, here I can write this out. So the h is at zero, the e is at one, the l is at two, the l is at three, and the o is at four. So we want index to take on each of those five values. And once index is five, which is equivalent to the number of characters in the string, then we need to stop because we've already printed out all of our characters. So all we need to do here is simply return. Now, if we get here, then we know we're not at our base case and we need to do some work. So we're gonna print out the char at index. I'm just gonna simply put spaces in between here. If I want, I could print out a new line character once I'm done, just to advance that uh, cursor to the next line. That would be fine. I don't need the spaces here, or I can put them on their own line. Totally up to me. Uh, this is how I'll do it. And then we'll have a recursive step. Okay, so we want some progress towards this base case eventually being true. So what am I going to do? I'm gonna call display string again, still passing an S, but this time I'm gonna pass in index plus one, right? Index is initially zero, right? Start at the first character. And now I'm going to add one so that the next call of display string, index is one, will print out the character at one. The next call, index is two, will print out the character at two, so on and so forth. All right, let's try this. Oops. And there it is, H-E-L-L-O. -L -L -O. Let's try it with a larger string, just to make sure that it's working. Let's try recursion. All right, there we have it, recursion. So we're able to traverse character by character through a string, 
and we'll print out each character as we go. All right, I wanna solve this problem again, but I want to solve it so that we don't have to pass in this index. It's not such a big deal with our recursive step because this recursive step is kind of internal, but for externally facing calls, originating calls, it's really clunky to require the programmer, whoever calls this function, to pass in zero, because it's always gonna be zero, right? We're always gonna start at zero. So I wanna clean this up so that these calls can be cleaner. Meaning I don't need to pass in zero. All right, so how are we going to do this? Well, we can't have the same base case because we don't actually have index anymore. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel off each character of S after we print it. So that means once we've peeled off all characters, then S, its length, would be zero. So once there's no more characters in S, S is the empty string, which I could also test for, then I'm done recursing. I've done all the work. Okay, so I'm still going to see out a character, okay? But remember, I don't have index anymore. So if I'm gonna be peeling off each character after I print it, that means that the first character in the string is going to be the character I want to print. So I'm gonna do s dot at zero. Okay, so my string is always going to have the first um, character be the character I want to print out. So for example, it's going to be hello, then it's going to be LO, and then it's going to be LLO, and then it's going to be LO, and then it's going to be just O, and then it's going to be the empty string. So how am I going to do this? How am I going to print out the H and then peel off the H to pass into display string? so that the next call has LO, and eventually we get down to an empty string. Well, what I'm gonna do is take advantage of a member function of the string class called substr. So I'm going to have my recursive step, so display string, and I'm not just gonna pass in S, I'm gonna pass in S once I've called substr on it, which will return a copy of the string, which is a substring starting at the first index, first value I put here, which will be one, right? If I just print out zero, which is H, then I want a substring of S starting at one, which is E, and then number of characters starting at one, which is simply gonna be S dot length minus one, because I'm peeling off one character. All right, so now in main, I'm gonna call display string. I don't need to pass, it, pass in the index anymore because I'm going to simply, as my recursive step, pass in a string that is one smaller each time. I'm gonna peel off that first character that I just printed out, and eventually I will pass in an empty string, and that is when I will stop. And there we go. Now we have two solutions to display string, and one of them only requires one argument, the string itself, so it is more elegant of a solution. All right, this kind of substringing approach, which is after I process a character, I'm gonna kind of throw it away, is gonna be the approach that I'm gonna use for the rest of our functions. All right, next we're gonna move on and write our display string reverse, which is going to print out each character in the string, but in reverse order. So I'm actually gonna be able to take advantage of this function body of display string that I already wrote. So I'm gonna simply copy and then paste this body because I only have to make a few minor adjustments. So first off, we're going to be calling display string reverse, right? This is gonna be our recursive step inside of display string reverse is to call display string reverse. Next, this C out with the end L here is going to give us kind of some undesired behavior. So I'm gonna get rid of it. And then lastly, I need to print out the characters in reverse order. So that means that I'm going to print out each character in the string on my way back up the call stack as I'm returning and popping off the call stack. 
let me show you how this works. Instead of printing character by character as we go down, we're gonna print character by character as we go up. So let's start with our base case. So our base case is when S is the empty string, we return. Okay, so that brings us back to the call where S is the character O. Okay, so we're gonna to return to this line, which means the next line of execution is 123. We're gonna print out the character at index position zero, which is O. So we're gonna print out O as our first character, which is the last one. Then we're going to return to the previous recursive call in which the string is LO. We'll print out the L, which is at index position zero. Then we're going to return, pop this call to call stack and return to the previous call where S is LLO. We'll print out the L, we'll return, pop off the call stack. Okay, now we're at the call where S is ELLO. We'll print out the E, we'll return, pop off the call stack. We'll return to the originating call in which S is hello. We'll print out the H, and then we will return and pop off the call stack all the way back to the calling code in main. So let's try it. Okay, I'm gonna have to put an endl in here so that our hello in reverse and our recursion in reverse don't run next to each other, run all in together. All right, so here we have O-L-L-E-H, which is hello backwards, and here we have recursion, N-O-I-S-R-U-C-E-R, -E which is recursion backwards. So all we had to do in order to determine if we were printing out our string in forward order or reverse order is really change the order in which we were doing our recursive step and then doing our work, which is printing out each character. All right, moving on to our last one, we want to count the characters in the string. I'm going to simply uh, copy our last solution and then just update it. All right, so our base case is if s.length is zero, in which case the string is empty. So the number of characters in an empty string, that is a problem with an obvious solution. We're gonna return zero. We don't need to print out any characters anymore. We're gonna call count characters and return one, for the current character we're processing, plus however many characters are in the substring when we peel off the first character. That's it, that's our count characters. Okay, so we're gonna add one for the current character, and then we're going to add however many characters are there are in the substring with that one character gone. Until we've removed all characters, the number of characters in an empty string is zero. That is our obvious base case that's very easy to directly solve. All right, let's head over to main and let's print out the number of characters in let's do hello and recursion again. All right, so recursion has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine characters and hello has five. All right, so there we see five and nine. So our count characters is working. All right, just to recap, we solved three common operations on strings displaying character by character in forward order and in reverse order in counting the number of characters in the string. We solved these recursively. And I just wanna emphasize that my original solution for display string required this extra argument index, which was kind of clunky for our originating call to always have to pass in zero when that's never gonna change. It's always gonna be zero. So then I solved that problem again using a member function called substr, which is short for substring, to create a substring of S each call to display string in order to peel off the character that we just printed. That way we don't need index anymore and our originating call can be much cleaner. 
Also, it's a little bit more memory efficient because remember, every single call to a function, there has to be room on the stack allocated to store all of its local variables. So even reducing our function to have one less local variable can make it more memory efficient, especially if we're gonna be calling this function for really large strings. All right, well, that's it. Thanks for watching.